So as you can tell from the photos behind you, I have had a long and storied career as an IT consultant. <laughs> and it was the only way that I could afford to travel the world and have these experiences, right? But there came a point where it all started to feel very selfish. I realized that the vast majority of people would never see the things that I was seeing. Today, almost 4 billion people live in cities. We are urban, tech-driven beings. And for most of us, the natural world will continue to drift further and further away from our daily lives and priorities. So I decided to quit my perfectly good job and see whether I couldn't build an army of urban conservationists, whether they be stockbrokers in New York, college students in Lagos, teachers in Berlin, or families in Jakarta. Because it's the engagement of those audiences that will drive the market conditions, the financing, and the policy that's so critical to enabling conservation work worldwide. Now, the good news is, is that most of these people already love wildlife. It's not that they don't care or that they don't know the facts. It's that they're not being engaged in terms that are relevant to their daily lives. Modern channels, leveraged for the benefit of wildlife, has the potential to change that. Consider, for example, that 2.1 billion people around the world play mobile games, and that number is growing. It's actually astounding to me that there aren't literally thousands of games out there for wildlife, for wildlife conservation. Our engagement efforts have to consider these audiences and the channels they use and engage them on their terms, not ours. I started Internet of Elephants to try and create that engagement. We combined science with modern digital channels to tell stories about animals and wildlife through games and data visualizations. And while we're not all scientists, everything we do is based on real data. The trick is bringing that data to life. We tried to see whether we could create a sense of empathy by just the GPS data alone. As a pride, they remain close to each other 90% of the time for protection, cooperative hunting, and social bonding. When Valentine is ready to find a mate, she makes two trips into the adjoining Nakuru National Park. She remains in the area for approximately three days each time, probably accompanied by a male lion. On her second trip back to her pride, we see that something is blocking her way. The once non-functioning electric fence has been fixed, and she cannot get through. Valentine becomes stressed and hungry and nearly dies. Researchers intervene to transport Valentine back to Fleur and the rest of the pride. Soon after, she gives birth to three new cubs. And with our grant from National Geographic, we looked into how to make this experience a little bit more exploratory and interactive. In this data visualization, we modeled the movements of over 3,000 animals over a seven-day period of time at the Old Pejeta Conservancy in central Kenya to give a bird's eye view of the interaction and diversity of life within the park. The user can explore a wildlife-rich region and understand more about the habitat and the wildlife, while also diving deeper into some of the individual storylines about the animals and the conservation work that happens there. Now, we wanted to see whether we could also bring a broader audience directly into the story as well. So we looked into and explored the power of individual animals and augmented reality to get people's attention. We partnered with six different conservation organizations to create six real animals and bring their stories to global audiences around the world. We received literally thousands of photographs from India to Brazil to Russia as players competed to be the augmented reality wildlife photographer of the year.
And we're currently enriching all these experiences through gamification. Wildiverse is a mobile game that's based on the real lives of apes and researchers in the Congo and Borneo. Players play the scientist and are sent on missions to explore their own neighborhoods to track these animals while supporting the organizations that work with them. So think Pokemon Go, but with Fio the orangutan and Teresa the lowland gorilla. Wildiverse will release this summer in the UK um, in partnership with the Chester Zoo with further releases to come soon after. And while we're starting with just apes, the plan is to expand that um, to other animals and other habitats. And lastly, we're working on a collaboration with Runtastic, which is part of Adidas, to develop a fitness application to let players compete with wild animals based on the GPS data of how far they run and how high they climb. So imagine trying to take more steps than Ashaya the jaguar in Brazil, or trying to bicycle farther than Neatu the wildebeest runs during her annual migration. Now, I realize that much of this may seem whimsical, and I will admit to often feeling intimidated in the, preservation, in, the, in the presence of conservationists and scientists who are literally on the ground working tooth and nail for the preservation of species, as I am now. Um, but I also fully believe that without effectively attracting and activating the next generation of potential difference makers, the next hundred years of wildlife conservation will continue to be an uphill battle, supported only by the will of those very few. So whether it's data visualizations or games or other techniques, think about how technology can play a crucial role in bringing the wildlife story to those audiences and helping us get out of our comfort zone of who we're engaging and how we're engaging them. Thank you.